This oh, just remind you of the old days <laughs> back at the store? Yeah. <laughs> Except you had a feather duster then. You went like this. It just came in, and it came from Ohio. Vi Agner. Yes, Jay-Z. But I, I called the, I love the wine, and it came from, and I called the guy up, and he's in Ohio. I said, well, where's the wine? He goes, Ohio. I said, but this is from Lodi. Why would you have the wine in Ohio? He goes, I moved it out here. He just want me to move it back? I said, yeah, move it back. <laughs> You know, there are <laughs> things that happen in this business that make no sense make whatsoever. Sense Hi, I'm Ed Massiano. This is my co-host, uh, what's your name again? Paul Calcarian? Paul Calcarian. Yeah, yeah. I'm why the I'm month club? Yes, man, Ed. For, this I is couldn't no agree with you more completely. November? 20 November, yeah. November 2014, Jeez. it's over. You know? Look, we got our gift catalog printed. Oh, I should have brought one in here. We have, have. We have all our, we have an incredible gift catalog. They're in your box. Uh, we really Where's stepped out box? this year. Where is it? We're, we're, oh, thank you. Yes. Thank we you. really stepped out this year with the gift catalog, and uh, I think you'll be really impressed and, and want to. In fact, we got an order uh, from Kansas City yesterday for seven or eight Paul Myers and the Chateau Montalena Shard and the uh, Maryvale profile. I mean, the guy loved what he saw in the catalog. So wow. Get that while you can. But we're here to talk about the classic series for November of 2014. And you think you're going to love those lineup. wines? Wait till you taste these wines. Great lineup this month. The Longitude. Uh, this is from our good friends uh, at Longitude. G&G &G, uh, Importing, uh, family business. The father comes, the brother comes, the sister comes. Uh, but they brought in this wine. No, this is not the same one. This is their wow. uh, contact. I love this wine. Really, something else. Mm. You know, it comes from it comes from Chile. You know. I, I'm getting, we're getting more and more really good Chilean wines. And this is, you, the one thing about the Chilean wines that's happened over the many years is the depth. Man, they've just gotten so Yeah, they've got some density to them. You know, they're, they're starting to taste like taste serious that. wines, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting a, serious about it. About eighteen ninety nine on the shelf, seven ninety nine for more. This is, this is pedigree Cabernet. I mean, it really is. It's got all the spice, it's got all the cassis, it's got all the vanilla. They, and the old. You know, they, they really have that kind of Napa Valley sort of earthy, licorice sort of component and that dense blackberry, mm. cherry fruit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. It's a 95 for me. That's really good. Seven ninety nine. You put that with some of these $25 wines that you can buy now and people will be confused. Well, I'm confused, so Ed's, I can understand confused. that, you know. Okay, so this I, this this is another one of these wines that came to us from a broker. Yeah, boy, that was really yeah, nice. I'm just thinking, wow, this is really good. It's 2012 Chardonnay. It's called Red Autumn. It's got. I'm not sure what district it mostly is from. It just says California. But it's got a, just a subtle hint of vanilla in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <sighs> Nice little grapefruity sort of citrus component going in there. You're not a lot of oak, but just enough to tell you, yeah, we thought about it, but we didn't think about it too hard. It's very feminine. Mm -hmm. It says vintage bottle in Napa, but the juice is California, so. Yeah, it could come from anywhere. I mean, you know. Um, but I'd like the subtleness of the Chardonnay and the, and the oak and the well, balance. It's just good winemaking is what this well, is. Well, that's what happens, because if you get a grape, if you get the juice and you make the wine, it's, it's lighter. You, you can't over oak it. So this guy took what he was given and decided to give a little oak, which gives it a little dimension. Mm. But still got that green apples in it. Eighteen ninety nine on the shelf, six ninety nine dollars reorder price, and I'm giving it a 95 as well. I think it's delicious wine. Wow, that is really fun. I want some. I want some. Well, you can have some. So today, so Ed, are you ready today? Because today is our, our corporate smoked brisket cook-off. Because Ed and Val, our general manager, they're having a throwdown. And because the last one that I tried to smoke was, what you, would you correct my English? Unedible? Inedible. Yeah, inedible. It was well, horrible. I had to run to the market and buy steak. <laughs> <laughs> so what was wrong with it? it I, I only smoked it for like three hours. Oh, that's nothing. That's, that's it, not I smoked mine for 24. So I'm making the wings, and I make good wings. I make good wings. <laughs> I've always been a good wing man. So we're going to see, and you'll know the update in the next video. Now, you know, this is, our, this is our friend Jeff Dye again. Well, I'll tell and you, this wine <laughs> is a total mind blower. I mean, to get a petite Syrah from California this good, Fifteen ninety nine in the shelf, which is a joke price. I mean, that's like half of what really good petite sirahs are selling for because there's so few of them now. They're selling for really expensive. Seven ninety nine is killer. I tasted this and I went, "Oh my god, look at the color on this sucker!" 
But you know what's great about it? It doesn't have that whole acid finish in it, mm -hmm. but you get all the complexity of Petit Sirah and the berry flavors in mm. the mid palate. Absolutely stunning. It doesn't warm. jump out of the glass at you, but it's, man, on the palate. I'm jumping. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. On the glass. I might take one of these home myself, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. All the rich berries, you know, Petit Sirah that comes to us, so much of it is so tannic, you can't drink it almost. You know, you have to sit and sit on it, sit on it, sit on it. But this is really soft. Yeah, it's got a nice um I got a 96 because of its... Seven ninety nine. That's That's absolutely amazing. I am beside myself. I am amazed. Prepare to be amazed at, at this next Viognier, Viognier. Viognier. Oui. Viognier. 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 Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Could not be. They should make one of those a mimicker and with your face on it. It would be. They have one. Yeah. <laughs> be, I, I inspired it. As a matter of fact, it will not feel like Viognier. Just telling you now. It won't. It won't feel like Viognier. It won't taste. What? What, what does Viognier okay, feel like? Okay, this is a 2011, so it's been in the bottle a little while. The color's there, but it's got this floral. I mean, it just kind of blew me away. And Jay Z, that's his initials. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in Ohio, and why he wanted to make wine. I don't know. He's got a brand. This sells for seventeen ninety nine, just about anywhere if you can find it. It's six ninety nine for more. But I just thought it was so interesting because it did not remind me of what typical Viognier does. Well, it's got a little bit of that kind of pineapple sort of tropical fruit, which is what we usually describe uh, Chardonnay like. But it's, it's nothing like Chardonnay. It's it's obviously Viognier. Yeah, the, I, it's, the nose is, but because of its age, I think it's just got more complex. Mm -hmm. It's got a floral component. Mm, I, think it's wow. just, I, think, I think it's just really fun. Wonderful mid palate. It's yeah. got that nice richness, but it's not overdone, and it's got really nice piquant acidity. And I, you, we see VNAs from Lodi. I mean, we see enough of them, but we see everything from Lodi right now. That's true. You know, that's like the new hot area for for bargain wines in the state. Mm. You know, until they get stupid and try to decide that they want to raise their prices all over again. I love the depth this of this wine. Delicious, really good depth, yeah. really nice intensity in the mid palate, which is very difficult for most wines to get. And just so as you know, this is lot number two. Boy, I'm so glad. Boy, lot number one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. You know. If you see this on the shelf, it's lot number one. I would not. Absolutely. Lot number two is the only only lot oh, to ever get. It. I don't care what the wine is, or the varietal, or the vintage, <laughs> or even who is saying it. Actually, uh, I'm doing a 94 on that. Um, okay, I'll do 94. Go ahead. Just so you know, folks, is which why we're being sarcastic is that to put this on the label, it has to go through all kinds of. TTB, federal approval, There's, it's not like all of a sudden, let's label it not number two, right? This is all premeditated, all labeling is premeditated months before the wine comes out. So who knows what lot it really is from is the question. And who cares? Exactly. <laughs> and on <laughs> that note, which I think was a C sharp, yeah. is our show for today for November 2014. we got one more month to go and then we hit 2015. I think that's how it works, isn't it? Who knows? I forget. Ed, I'm Paul, glad I have you around. You're like my atomic clock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>